Welcome to the latest update on the Australian housing market from RP Data. Today, we are focusing on the March results from the RP Data Rismark Hedonic Home Value Index. Over the March quarter, Australian home values were down 2.1% across the combined capital city housing markets. The weak quarterly result is mostly the result of a large decline in values over the month of January. Values over the month were down 1.2% in that month alone, followed by a half percent fall in February and a 0.2% fall over the month of March. The quarterly result was a negative for each capital city, ranging from a 1.1% decline in Sydney all the way down to a 4.6% decline in Brisbane. Undoubtedly, the flooding which affected Brisbane in January has negatively impacted on local market conditions. However, market conditions have been sedate around South East Queensland since the end of 2007. These soft conditions have been compounded by the severe weather events seen early in the year. Sydney and Melbourne remain as the only markets to record a positive result over the 12 months to March. Sydney values are up 2.1% over the year and Melbourne values are up 1.0%. Regional market and capital city market gains are moving back into line after a long run of underperformance from the non-capital city markets. Over the March quarter, the combined rest of state markets saw a 1.8% decline in detached house values compared with a 2.1% fall across the combined capital cities. Regional home values are now down by 0.5% over the 12 months to March compared with a 1.2% fall in detached house values for capital city houses over the same time frame. Leading indicators are continuing to weaken, with homes taking longer to sell and vendors applying greater discounts to their price expectations. The average selling time for a capital city house is now 59 days compared with 45 days at the same time last year. Perth, Darwin and Brisbane are showing the longest average selling times at 68 days, 67 days and 66 days respectively. Canberra, Sydney and Melbourne on the other hand are recording the quickest average selling time at 43 days for Canberra, 55 days for Sydney and Melbourne. Vendor discounting has increased to 6.5% in March compared with a 5.2% discounting rate in March 2010. Vendors are having to be more flexible on their price expectations in the Brisbane, Hobart and Perth markets where the average discounting rate is now 7.7%, 7.4% and 6.9% respectively. The amount of effective supply continues to rise, with advertised stock levels now 33% higher than at the same time last year. The good news is that the number of new listings being added to the market is now slowing, which may start to see some of that effective supply being absorbed. Rates of capital gains have been vastly different from market to market and region to region. At one end of the spectrum is Brisbane and Perth, where home values have fallen by 6.8% and 6.4% over the year. At the other end is Sydney and Melbourne, which are the only two cities to record an improvement in home values over the year. Over the year to March 2011, Sydney recorded capital gains of 2.1%, which made it the best performing capital city over the year. The leading indicators such as average time on market and vendor discounting continue to, su to suggest that the performance of the Sydney market will be superior to the combined capitals benchmark. Homes are selling faster than the benchmark average and vendors are having to discount their homes less. Rental yields in Sydney are also above average with houses returning 4.4% and units 5.1% gross. Melbourne values are slowing in line with the combined capital city trend. However, Melbourne has managed to maintain a positive rate of growth over the 12 month period with values up by 1.0%. Capital gains have been largely focused in the unit market where values improved 1.4% compared with the 0.8% gain across detached houses. Selling time has increased from 41 days last year to 55 days in March this year, which is still faster than the combined capital's average. Vendor discounting is now at 6.5%, which is spot on with that capital city average. The high rate of capital gains since 2007, together with a relatively flat rental market, has left Melbourne's rental yields the lowest of any capital city. Houses are returning a gross yield of just 3.8% and units 4.2%, both well below average. Brisbane is once again the weakest performing capital city market, with values down 6.8% over the year and 4.6% over the quarter. Brisbane's performance has consistently tracked below average since the end of 2007, when Brisbane values rose by about 
A recent study by IP Data showed that about 8,000 residential land parcels across Brisbane and Ipswich were completely inundated with an estimated value of $5.2 billion. A further 10,300 property, properties were partially inundated by the recent flooding events. These figures highlight the magnitude of the flooding event in Brisbane and it is likely that affected markets won't return to normal conditions for some time yet. Highlighting the sedate market conditions, Brisbane homes are averaging 66 days to sell and vendors are reducing their initial price expectations by 7.7%. That's the largest discounting rate of any capital city. One positive to take from the weakness in the Brisbane city marketplace is the relative improvement in affordability. Brisbane house prices are now slightly more than 25% more affordable than Sydney's, suggesting the Brisbane value proposition has improved substantially. Adelaide has recorded a solid performance in home value rises over the past decade, averaging a 9.8% capital gain year on year over the period. Values in Adelaide were absolutely flat over the last 12 months, with a 0.0% movement. With a median house price of $410,000, Adelaide remains the most affordable mainland capital city. Rental markets in Adelaide haven't been as buoyant, with rental yields being recorded below the capital city average. Houses are returning a gross yield of 4.1% and units 4.7%. Selling time and vendor discounting remain slightly better than the capital city averages, with homes averaging 56 days to sell and vendors discounting by an average of 6.0%. Perth has continued its weak performance, recording a 3.4% decline over the quarter and a 6.5% decline over the year. Despite the turnaround in the resources sector, one of the lowest rates of unemployment, strong jobs growth and population growth, there has still been no turnaround in the Perth housing market performance. Vendors are still taking a longer than average time to sell their properties, at 68 days, which is the highest Toma market figure for any capital city. Vendor discounting is also continuing to trend downwards with the average discount now at 6.9%. Rental markets are showing a subtle improvement in Perth with rents up 5.4% over the last six months. Yields are now about on average with the combined capital cities with houses now returning 4.3% gross and units returning 4.8% gross. The Darwin market is slowing quite quickly, bringing Darwin's nine year run of above average performance to a halt. Over the year, Darwin values are down 1.3% and 2.5% over the March quarter. It was only a matter of time before such a long run of growth, which was driven by a strong resources sector, strong population growth and a scarcity of development, came to an end. Despite the consistently high capital gains, Darwin's rental market remains one of the tightest in the nation. Rental returns are still averaging 5.4% for houses and 5.7% for units, which is the highest of any capital city. Selling time is now blowing out with homes taking on average 67 days to sell. That's the second longest selling time of any capital city. Vendors are yet to show their flexibility in price expectations, however. Darwin is recording the lowest level of price discounting at 5.3%. So it looks like Darwin vendors are happy to sit out the longer selling times in order to meet their price expectations. However, it's likely that with such a high number of days on market, further price discounting will be inevitable. Canberra has remained quite resilient, with home values down just 0.5% over the year and 1.3% over the March quarter. The city has historically been a reasonably strong performer thanks to the solid rental market conditions and housing demand from government and related industries. Rental yields remain some of the highest in the nation, with houses returning 4.9% gross and units returning 5.4%. Canberra houses are taking just 43 days to sell uh, that's the shortest selling time of any capital city. Vendors are discounting their prices by 6.2%, which is also better than the capital city average. At the macro level, the Australian housing market is making what could be described as a reasonably controlled exit from what has been a very strong growth phase during 2009 and early 2010. The monthly result for January, where capital city home values fell by 1.2% in that month alone, has dragged the March quarter figures down and we could expect April figures to be more in line with the result for March, where values were virtually flat. Of course, there is going to be a great deal of variance between the major capital cities and regional housing markets. Coastal markets that are synonymous with tourism, holiday homes and sea changes are likely to continue to languish until more overseas holidaymakers return to Australia. With the high Aussie dollar, 
this is not likely to eventuate anytime soon. Resource driven markets on the other hand continue to benefit from strong commodity prices and a lack of accommodation for workers. Across the capital city markets we do expect a continuation of reasonably flat conditions. Despite any lack of evidence as yet, Perth and Brisbane may be the markets to watch due to their improved value proposition and their association with the resources sector which is very active in Western Australia and Queensland. From an economic perspective, Australia continues to show positive indicators. The recent CPI figures for March were higher than expected, however core inflation remains around the bottom of the Reserve Bank's target range. The futures market isn't pricing in a cash rate rise until early 2012. That may prove to be conservative if core inflation starts to show a consistent upwards trend, which in that case we would certainly expect interest rates to rise sooner. Unemployment has moved beyond capacity with a national unemployment rate of 4.9%. Wages growth is trending upwards, wealth levels are at record heights and consumers are focusing on paying down debt. The last point, that one about paying down debt, is one of the key reasons why we are seeing transaction volumes lower than average in the Australian housing markets. Most Australian consumers are very happy to save rather than spend at the moment and despite the robust economic conditions, consumer confidence remains shaky. With advertised stock levels high and consumer activity low, it is likely the Australian housing market is facing a continuation of the subdued conditions recorded since mid last year. If you'd like any more information about the Australian housing market, visit www.rpdata.com.